Hi, so as I'm drawing here, I want to talk about um, sketching or drawing from imagination. I, I'm not doing a particularly difficult drawing, I'm just drawing whatever comes to mind. And usually I like when I'm relaxing and just sketching, I usually start with sketching faces because uh, I find it fun. Um, there's an endless variety of faces that you can sketch and invent and I, I like inventing characters inventing um, just inventing different faces and, and so forth and I don't really have a clue as to where any of this is gonna go other than I'm just trying to invent a face and I'm trying to make it as convincing a face as possible uh, from my imagination uh, I don't know like uh, like I said, other than that, where this sketch is going to go. And usually when I start sketching, the first one is kind of uh, a stiff drawing. And you'll see as I, as I get into another sketch that I, I loosen up a bit more. Um, but this is, you know, you got to start somewhere. And this is just to get me started as far as sketching is concerned. Um, so that being said, um, sketching from imagination. Now, the thing is that when we're children, as young children, we, we like to draw and you and our resources really our imagination. We don't copy photographs as children or we don't sketch from the model as children. We sketch and draw from our, our imagination. I remembered I remember kindergarten and I remembered, uh, um, you know, there, there's a point in class where you go to a, a, a children's easel and you you can sketch whatever you want and they let you take your your painting done in poster paints home at the end of the day and so forth and uh, and you know usually you sketch from your imagination the symbols of things that you know as you go through you know your, your young life like you may put a house or a tree or Sun um, I, you know, I, I actually, as a kid, I had drawn the interior of a car. I had painted the interior of a car. I, I don't know how accurate I was when I did it. I just know that a long time ago I found it interesting and, and I, I painted that. Um, but, and, and by interior, I don't mean anything complicated. I mean, as a child, all you see is, is uh, the dashboard and then the world outside that dashboard and, and it was just dark and murky and, and I, I don't know how clear that painting was. I just vaguely remember it. Um, but, you know, you, you, you're not drawing or painting from life other than your memory. So you're making I, I really memory drawings or, or imagination later on as you continue to, 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 if you continue to draw and experiment, you might try uh, drawing some of your favorite comic book characters. I know I did. I know um, when I was young, loved Spider-Man, my favorite comic book character Spider-Man. Before that, uh, Popeye. Um, I can't remember anything else. It really, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking really like um, second grade, third grade, so forth. I was really into Spider-Man. Then as I went on in uh, um, middle school, I remember I was really into Conan. And then at that point, I started to remember, or I started to look for who were the artists that I really, really like. Then I started following them, and I started following the books that they drew. And so it was that I started following guys like um, John Buscema, Neil Adams, uh, Bernie Wrightson, um, gosh, I, I, there, there are a ton of them, but I can only, Gene Cohen, Gil Kane, um, uh, I can only remember those right now, and of course, Frank Frazetta, and I started getting more into illustration and illustrators, and I found out about, uh, the, the, um, the classical illustrators. I found out about Norman Rockwell, Dean Cornwell, uh, J.C. Liondecker, um, gosh, who else, who else, uh, Maxfield Parrish, Howard Pyle, N.C. Wyeth, uh, and on and on and on. Um, they're just a ton of really good illustrators. Albert Dorn, uh, and, you know, 
and, and so forth. So there were a ton of really good illustrators that I started to pick up. And all of this, all of this is before starting to draw and paint from life and imagination. I just started to learn about uh, these guys and about um, the different things that I liked to draw at the time. And it was all drawing from my imagination. Then as I went on, I went to the High School of Art and Design and for the first time, I started drawing and painting from life. And it was different. And it was, and, and um, uh, all of a sudden, a whole other world opened to me. And uh, um, I started to learn about a different artist. Artists who you knew before, but you never really paid attention to uh, because it, it didn't appeal to my imagination as a child. But when I started drawing and painting from life, then I started paying attention to Rembrandt, to Sargent, to Velasquez, to um, Soroya, to Winslow Homer, to uh, uh, Aikens, um, to any number of great artists from the past. Now, before then, before then, I, I, I liked the work of Renaissance artists like Leonardo da Vinci and, and, and Michelangelo. And to be honest, up until the early Renaissance, most of what you saw was not drawn or painted from life. But it was um, really, the again, the artist's interpretation of uh, their memory of what they've seen. You know, I don't believe they started really drawing from the model till the Renaissance. Now, I don't know about Greek and Roman uh, um, paintings. Um, there's not a lot of them, but um, and uh, I know that um, I'm, I'm sure the paintings were drawn from imagination. But that then the, there's the bust and the portraits, uh, especially Roman senators and so forth. And I'm sure those were done from life. But then there are other things. Um, Gosh, what are they? I, I, there were these paintings that were um, put on um, on coffins, and they were meant to be portraits of the person who was inside. And um, I'm not, I'm sure the person didn't sit for the portrait, but it was meant to be uh, uh, meant to be something closer to life. Um, but there's that. Um, I, I don't know how far that goes into, but. Uh, um, that I don't know how far that goes into painting and drawing from life, but I know before the Renaissance, right, the the, the artists that you see uh, basically recorded life, but I do not believe that their, their drawings, they, they are, at least they were not as accomplished as what came after, beginning with artists like Leonardo and, 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 and so forth, because Michelangelo's figures... Um, I'm sure that the figures were drawn from the model and so forth. Um, but there was still a lot of imagination vo involved in putting these things together. And imagination persisted to be a part of every painting that came afterwards. Um, and and some, somehow we get, um, if, if um, all you do is the academic part, the just drawing and painting from life, and uh, from the model, and that's all you do. Um, where does the interpretation of these things come in? As far as accuracy becomes important, you know, it, but it doesn't become more important than the interpretation. You know, it, you, you get to, it, I think that what happens as a student, um, I got to, used to, drawing and painting from mo from the model and or from a photograph and just relied on that reference so much that the the, the imagination part became more and more stale there, there's you know sometimes we start painting and um we don't leave room for interpretation we don't leave like we may see an interesting pose and um, we we just paint that pose, but say if you if you if there was a fireman sitting down, and I did this in class one time. There was a um, somebody came. The the one student um, father was a fireman, 
and he posed for us in his gear and all of that. And uh, um, he sat down and posed for us, and then we we all painted him. And uh, that, but but for most of us, the the painting never went beyond the pose. And it wasn't until the instructor that I had, he said, look, why don't you make a painting out of this? And he started putting in background, you know, just uh, uh, what you might find in a firehouse as far as where they hang their coats and or, or gear and stuff like that. And and, and, and it made, the, you know, it, it went beyond just interpreting a pose. It was uh, adding some background and some meaning to the painting. Uh, and, and it involved a bit of imagination and a bit of, you know, uh, 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 just just trying to interpret what might be in in uh, around this, this 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 firefighter. So I didn't start thinking of, uh, of things like that. And then there was another pose uh, where the instructor got angry at the class because the class didn't read certain hints in the pose where they could have made it into something else. I'm, I'm remembering also there was a, a, a book written by Norman Rockwell. It's called Rockwell on Rockwell, where Rockwell took all the lessons that he used for his, uh, um, for, for one of his classes, the classes he taught at the famous artist schools. It was really a correspondence course. And it was, uh, these, these lessons were collected and put into a book called Rockwell on Rockwell. And Rockwell took a single photograph of one person and showed the many ways he can reinterpret this photograph. He used this, this face of this one person, and that one person, uh, first he did a straight-on drawing uh, of that, 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 that photo. Then he did what, you know, interpreted him as a, as a pirate, as uh, um, someone, as a soldier in the Revolutionary War, as um, a guy, just a... Uh, you know, just, just these different, I can't remember all of them, but just these different, about five or six interpretations of the same photograph, uh, the same person, but he um, he just changed things here and there to create different characters from that. So he's using his imagination. Um, people sometimes get stuck on how 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 a Rockwell painting just seems so so accurate as far as details and everything is concerned but he actually put a lot of imagination into he used photo reference but his his uh, paintings were just not copies of photographs they were they were he he started out with a drawing of what he intended to do then he worked on that drawing got reference for every piece of that drawing and put it together like a jigsaw puzzle and then um and and he may rely on the photos for photos for details um, here and there, so it seemed like he was copying photographs. But actually, it was all an interpretation of the photographs, and those details were used to uh, to to just give further weight to to the whole concept, to give it more more clarity or more um, more authority to 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 the whole concept. So. He, he relied very much on his imagination. And that's pretty much, okay, so that's pretty much what, what um, I'm doing. Now, the thing is, with the, I'm, I'm just sketching here. I'm not making a, 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 a finished painting or finished drawing or anything like that. And sketching really, to me, is just an opportunity to, to do different things, to, to, um, to get more familiar with, uh, in this case, it'd be the program that I'm using to get, uh, to, to, to just play around with different ways of doing things, different marks, different colors that I might, uh, use different brushes, a different technique, um, so forth. I'm just sketching. So, you know what, basically that, that's pretty much what I wanted to say about sketching and about drawing and especially about drawing from imagination now this isn't much this is just this is drawing from that this is more sketching from imagination because i'm not doing a completed drawing but so much of what i did early on um i, I feel like i need to revisit uh as far you know uh, making a drawing or a painting 
from uh, from imagination uh, um, and using and, and I've done that before. I've I've done illustration work where most of what I had to do was from imagination because as I, as as you go on, you find that there's very 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 scant um, um, uh, a reference available to you now. Um, there's the, the internet and there's a ton of photos online but you never find exactly what you want so you do have to put things together like a jigsaw bustle now you see this is my second sketch and already I'm I'm, I'm a lot more looser in how I'm laying down the lines uh, um, it, it seems haphazard but it really isn't because I'm zeroing in on some areas and, and I'm just feeling more comfortable so I'm not thinking that I'm making mistakes, but I'm just trying to find the lines that, that, that I like the best. And then I'm later on, I'll select those lines and get rid of the rest. But I'm more comfortable. I'm less afraid of making mistakes and I'm less concerned about accuracy. I'm more, uh, um, more getting into the flow of the drawing. And uh, um, that's what makes this so much fun. As you continue to draw, it's not that first sketch. You 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 get it's first sketch is usually something that you got to get past. But as you go on, uh, you get looser, you get more confident, and you you know you you uh, figure out things a lot faster. You know so, and it isn't until you get tired and and it, it, it starts showing up in your drawing that you you're just tired and you need to take a break. But anyway. Um, okay, I was discussing imagination, and I'm, I, I lost my thought, my chain of thought there as I was describing, um, as I was describing what I was doing here. Okay, so putting things together like a jigsaw puzzle, that's where I was at. Yeah, because there's, there's not a lot of uh, reference that you can, that, that's, you know, that's put down on the internet that's just like, hey, you, this is what you're looking for. Um, you have to take what you can find and then you have to make that fit into your your original concept and a lot of times that's what I'm doing so I am exercising uh, uh, the imagination as far as um, the initial concept and um, and then going on from there and uh, getting the best reference that I can fit into this concept but then I'm not allowing myself or I'm not really or the, the even the reference is not allowing me to 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 copy it entirely wholesale because it's not exactly what it is that I'm looking for. So I'm forced to reinterpret the the the, the, the photograph. And uh that has its 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 advantages and disadvantages. I think I would be happier if I were to find something that was more more in tune with what I original with with my concept, but because I'm rushed for time, I have to do I have to use what's available to me. So pretty much that's it. And then what we have is uh, what's left, I guess, to talk about is simply just the idea of sketching. I mean, talk about you know the imagination, how important that is. Uh, sketching, you know. Uh, I, I, sometimes we, we get used to saying the idea, oh, it's just a sketch. Uh, sometimes a sketch can be just a sketch, but sometimes it could be more. Um, sketching, it, it stretches your imagination. I'm, I'm Like I said, when I started these drawings, I'm not even ex exactly sure where I'm going to and where I wind up uh, is some place that I never intended to wind up to begin with. Um, and that, that's either good or bad, depending on my imagination at that point. You know, so it stretches your imagination. It helps you to get more comfortable with the tools. Uh, I, I, which to me, it, it's always a challenge. Um, there, there's not at one point, regardless of what materials that I use, whether it's traditional materials like watercolor or gouache or oils, uh, um, that I'm so comfortable with the material that I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, there, there's some things that you get used to doing, but sometimes... You want to stretch beyond that, and you find yourself stretching beyond that, and you wind up making a mess, but even that mess is useful because you find out how far you can go, or you find out that, you know what, maybe you failed, but there's something in it that you can 
continue to develop and find something new for yourself you know so it's it's it, doing this makes you more comfortable with, with the tools now that you you can get more comfortable with the tools regardless of whether you're um or the medium regardless whether you're sketching from reference or or from your imagination but i think your imagination leaves you with less of a safety net because you're 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 forced to rely on your memory and you're forced to rely on you just just uh, um your own ingenuity uh how you get things done uh based on your memory based on um you know not not based on anything external so that you you're you're forced to rely so much on yourself um and it, it also helps you to consider new way new ways of doing things just like that because you're forced to rely on yourself and you're considering because you're you're not you don't have anything to uh to copy from as far as reference you, you, you consider new new uh, shapes, colors, uh, ways of making marks, and so forth. Now, you can do this with reference, but you again, you have that safety net because you know how far you can go, more or less, because you, you have something that you're trying to reinterpret, whether you have... You have your imagination. You have to call on all of your experiences from memory to reinterpret those experiences and not just one source. Um, so you're, 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 you're forced to consider different ways of, of getting this done. You, you, and then, you know what, once you're done with it, there is one safety net is that you do fall back on the idea that this is just a sketch. This is just for you. This is not meant really for the world to see, even though it's, I find it fun to look at artist sketches. I, I Sometimes I find it more fun to, to looking at the actual finished paintings uh, because in it you can see the artist thinking. You can see the artist going to places where they're not comfortable with or where they might not fully resolve, where it's a half a thought and it's left unfinished but it's a thought that's leading to something else and you can see the artist thinking uh, the artist sometimes changing their minds and the scribbles that they make and so forth and and, and it's a different experiences from looking at something as finished there's more of a um, th there's more of a direction there's there's less of a um, you know everything everything in the painting is a means to an end Whereas um, there's more open interpretation in the sketch and you feel like the artist is, is you, you, you kind of like the artist is letting you in on his thought process. And I find that you see that more in the sketch than you do in a finished painting. The, everything's resolved in the finished painting where in a sketch, not everything is a resolve, but there are things that are hinted at. And you you know because it's a sketch, as an artist you can either feel, you you don't feel so annoyed or downhearted when you fail because you realize that you are pushing yourself, and that you can either keep it or discard it. It's up to you, and then you can move on. You can move on to the next sketch, and it's not a big deal. When it's successful, it's 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 sometimes. It's a lot more fun. Not all the times when it's successful. It's a lot more fun than a finished painting. I think a, a finished painting, or seems more like a labor than a sketch. A sketch seems more like fun. You know, there, there, there's play, and then you know there, there's there's that. Yeah, I, I mean, if everything works out in a finished painting, there, there's a um, there's a pride and there's a happiness that comes with it. And then there's, you know, sometimes you live with it and then you start realizing all the things that you need to, that you could have done better. Whereas a sketch, it is what it is. It is there's nothing beyond that. It's a sketch. Of course you could do better. But you would have discovered some things in that sketch that you can take to the next drawing or the next painting. And um, you enjoy that, 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 um that moment or that sketch or, or in, in you enjoy that moment in that sketch 
that that led you to that conclusion you know so anyway all of this is to say uh finally at the end of all of this is is just uh, um just that don't forget your imagination don't forget your imagination don't rely so much on reference or on drawing and painting from the model don't rely so much on accuracy that you forget imagination because accuracy is 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 part of the structure of the language that helps you to communicate what you want but imagination is what it's all about the imagination is what led you to consider what do you want to paint what do you want to draw everything from cave art to, to, to the Renaissance and, and, and beyond that anything that was effectively communicated as art was all about imagination the accuracy and how you depicted it was was really what helped you to relay that to your audience and and there, there, there's a there's an art in that there's a joy to that and so forth and I'm not discounting that I I, I, I appreciate that but you can't let go of the imagination part because the imagination is the why. The, the accuracy and, and, and all of that is the how. The imagination is the why. So anyway, I hope that um, this talk made sense. I, I, I don't know. Let me know. Let me know in the comments what do you think about, you know, about what I said, about, you know, drawing from the imagination, about um, drawing from life, about what whatever it is, you know. Um, uh, obviously, there are videos where I've made that are, are more accurate than this in terms of the interpretation of, of, of a model or, or, or a photo reference or whatever. But I, um, I don't think that for me, the experience of drawing is as much fun as when you're sketching. So that's it. Up until my next video, I will see you guys soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you if you like my videos and you, you want to subscribe to this channel, please do. Please do hit a like. Let me know that you like this video. Um, also, I have a Patreon page, which I will uh, put a link to below. And uh, um, if you care to join me, the, the, I, at this point, I only have two tiers. And that's a, a dollar tier and a three dollar tier, and um, with it there comes uh, sketchbooks, uh, I put monthly monthly sketches that I put together, and I hand out to my patrons. And um, for the three dollar tiers, there's a high res images that I put out every month and so forth. So uh, I'll leave the link below. You can check it out. There's some, uh, some there, there's some images that that are uh, just that that are not Patreon exclusive. But that's just so other people can see and, and uh, consider whether they want to join the Patreon, uh, my Patreon page. And then there are other images that are exclusive to my patrons on Patreon. So anyway, so I will leave that link below. And until next time, I will be back with another video. And uh, I will also let this play out. Maybe I'll put a little music in. And as long as I did this whole uh, video in real time. I'll let it continue to go in real time up until the end of the video. So I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.
Thank you.